Welcome to the Bankers Show, everybody. I hope you're having a beautiful week. I know I am, and uh, my <laughs> partner here, Armin and Bobby, we're just having a great time. Oh, it's been peaches and, and roses. Uh, so, uh, you know, if like and subscribe to the podcast. A lot has been going on. We did four sold-out shows last week in Toronto, two and two in Burlington. They went super well. I just have started posting the clips from it. And already people cannot get enough of a clip that I just posted where uh, I basically walked a woman and her husband. He didn't want to leave. He was enjoying the show. But, of course, um, he had to leave. So before we get to the show, how about you guys enjoy this awesome stand-up comedy clip from Burlington? You know, there's a lot of white women in this country with a lot of privilege, right? This one. <laughs> She's so privileged, she's not even watching the show. I'm just staring over here. Are you okay? What's that? The light is hot. The light is hot. Oh, okay. Well, you're not even facing it. <laughs> like on the back of your head, it's hot? So it's causing you to look not straight, but that way? <laughs> I know, it's she's tired. Class are back to is your wife? Yeah. That's nice. <laughs> what happened to her? She looks like she's, she's been sexually trafficked here. <laughs> <laughs> she's just sitting front row sad. I know. <laughs> you look so upset, I feel like I'm at home. Can't bring him anywhere, right? <laughs> <laughs> He's laughing, but also leaving. <laughs> Check me in. Yeah, so as I was saying, white women have a lot of privilege. <laughs> I'm excited. I'm excited to leave this country. Uh, I'm excited to... I'm not sure where I'm going to call home base. It could be Austin. It could be LA. Uh, it could be New York. We're going to see, and I'm going to go and figure all that out in the next couple weeks leading up to my May 8th start to my shows in Boston. So before that, uh, I'm going to go to the States and jump on shows and get my material right for for my crowd because i got i got to step foot in the country i feel like it would be a mistake to wait till may 8th yeah just show up being like just like oh well, these jokes work at yuck yucks i don't know <laughs> they're working in downtown toronto i don't know i don't know working in buffalo oh well, this kills in saskatoon oh. there <laughs> well i was killing in halifax the other week and then i, then I uh, drove down to fucking tampa they didn't know what the hell i was talking about <laughs> so i got a de-canadianify my jokes and um, the only way to do that is go to the states and actually perform comedy so that's pretty sick that i get to do that i'm very privileged um and uh, I, I, i'm very thankful to the canadian fans that helped me get to that point so keep sharing my videos and shit making them go viral and yeah this is a nice room i feel like we're, we're doing the podcast from a different spot this is my buddy's condo's party room and Every time I go to a condo party room, I'm just like, I want to live in a condo party room. <laughs> <laughs> like, they're always just so spacious. Like, this is what, like, condos give you a piece of what it's like to be rich, right? Like, you can have a one bedroom or like a bachelor and then still come down here and be like, ooh, pool table, <laughs> right? And then some Indian guy comes in, oh, the guy was going to use it. <laughs> but, so it's not as exclusive, but it is like a taste of being rich. Right? Yeah. It's just a little bit. Some of them have pools, right? It's like, you oh, the, I got a closet in Drake's house. Like, yeah, yeah. It is like that. But I like being in a condo party room. People, some of the best, like, parties when I was in, when I was doing commercial real estate, some guy would just be like, yo, come to the ice tower party room or like whatever. <laughs> <laughs> whatever condo you lived at, yeah. some guy would have a party in the party room and it would just be fucking chaos. Because it's it's like a par it's like having a private party. Right? Yeah. You can do whatever the fuck you want. I mean you can't smoke in it, but you like there's always usually a door to go out and smoke and shit like that. 
As long as you talk to security first. And, oh, I don't know. So are you allowed to go in? <laughs> 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 That's Armin's, Armin's joke. The Indian security guard is always telling you you can't go. Can I smoke out there? No, you can't. No. Yeah, I actually do have Indian security guards that work in the building behind the building I live in. And I go out to smoke like in front and then they come out and treat me like I'm homeless. Like they're like, no, you cannot. Oh, that smoke. office building? Yeah, yeah. They're like, you cannot smoke here. And I'm like, I live here. And they're like, whoa, I whoa, live in Scarborough. Oh, no, <laughs> I took five buses. To yeah, literally. To yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I'm trading in the Indian immigrants for the Mexican immigrants. Um, it's going to be States. huge. It's a huge. I feel like they, yeah, they don't have as. It's like you're a Pokemon evolving. Yeah. Like you're becoming Charizard. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you're just even the most racist. <laughs> What race will I pick on? <laughs> <laughs> It'd be funny, like the Pokemon. Like, remember when it was like, "Who's this Pokemon?" But it's just the race you're gonna make fun of that night. It take. That's why uh, another reason I want to go down before the tour because it takes a few sets, yeah. maybe more, to get acclimatized to get your sea legs when you're talking to different like people in a different country. Like, yeah, you can't expect everything to be the same. I mean, a lot of shit they're going to get and a lot of stuff is transferable between, you know, yeah. The Mexicans do Uber. I mean, they, but honestly, not even as much as Indians and in, like, in yeah, no, they still got in Indians Austin, doing that. There's less Mexicans doing Let's Uber go. in Good. Austin, Texas than there are Indians doing Uber Perfect. in Toronto. So I know what jokes I'll be doing on Kill Tony. Yeah. Talking about Mexicans. <laughs> so, Mexicans are more versatile. Yeah, they can build stuff. You don't really see yeah. a lot of like Indian construction There's workers. No, you they can't get the hard hat over the turban. You wouldn't want an Indian guy building a fence no. for you. Well, maybe if he was going to be on the other side. That's <laughs> 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 so fucked. <laughs> Only if you're building a wall around my house. Are you so building a 7-Eleven to work in for me? <laughs> He's got to build the 7-Eleven too. <laughs> He's got to build the... Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, but it's been a big week for comedy. Shane Gillis, I know everybody's talking about it. And uh, if you're listening, Shane, congrats. <laughs> um, you imagine. He's like, it oh. is funny. All the comics <laughs> who didn't really know Shane but had taken a picture with him, like yeah. posted the picture of them with him being like, oh, it's my boy. You know? Oh, I opened for this guy, actually. Oh, I <laughs> stood beside this guy once after a show. <laughs> this guy thought I was a fan. <laughs> I have a picture of me yeah. with him, and I was like, "Do I post this?" Like, no, I like, no, it's not cool for you because not. I knew him. If you start when you start working with him, yeah, because then you can be like, "Yo, I was in Toronto, and now I'm balling out." With but lost. it goes to show you that SNL does still have pull and 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 helps your career because right after he posted it, or right after it came out, he's announced that he's doing this deal with Netflix. They're buying yeah. his sitcom. And he's going to do another comedy special. And that, that's great news for comics oh, yeah. um, for like me or comics that aren't politically correct, comics that push the boundaries because it shows, hey, if you get the following exactly. and you make people like this type of comedy, you can change the world. You can mm-hmm. change how uh, people are entertained, what they're willing to be entertained by, what these bigger companies, these streaming companies are willing to do. So I'm fucking excited about that. And... We got to get working on a fucking show. Yeah, we got to write a show. Yeah, we got to write a show so that we can sell a show. <laughs> we got to write a show so we can do a show, and then there's another show. And then there's a show, and then, and then I there's a show about the show, about how we how fought d- about the show. How dare you say that on the show? <laughs> oh, you said that on the show. I can't be on the show. <laughs> got to take it down. <laughs> What's up, everybody? I hope you're enjoying the podcast. I am going on tour. I have a few Canadian dates left before my USA East Coast tour starts, the America Takeover tour. So my current dates that I have on the books for Canada, March 27th in Edmonton. Go get tickets. The comic strip at the West Edmonton Mall. We're about half sold out for that show, so go get your tickets. We are also going to be in Halifax, uh, Halifax, Nova Scotia, April 8th. Then I'm going to be in Amherst, April 10th, Fredericton, um, and, and some other East Coast place out in the what do they call it? The prairies? Not the prairie. No, the Maritimes. Maritimes. So between April 8th and 15th, I'm in the Maritimes in Canada. USA Tour starts May 8th in Boston. Go get your tickets. Gotta call <laughs> Netflix. Take her off. <laughs> I'm canceling Netflix. I'm pissed off. <laughs> 
Oh, well, I got canceled from Netflix. What? <laughs> I mean, so fucked up. Just you back at Yucks after <laughs> blowing up in the States. Like, whoa, you know. Oh, that was tough. You best got to go to oh, Thunder Bay again. <laughs> <laughs> got to go do crickets. <laughs> <laughs> There's a comedy club called Crickets and Thunder Bay. <laughs> I know. It's yeah. like the saddest fucking yeah. thing ever. Yeah. Oh, God. Yeah. There were some venues, like the Saskatoon venues. Remember remember the Saskatoon venue that we did the first night that the we were there? The park place? So the first time we went to Saskatoon, which if you don't know anything about Canada, which you shouldn't, hopefully, if you're listening to this, and you don't really need to, but Sas- Saskatchewan is one of the provinces, which is like a state. And Saskatoon is, um, I don't even think it's the capital. No, Regina's Regina's the capital. capital. Saskatoon is just like... Two cities. Yeah, that's it. Two Two cities cities. and a bunch of farms. And small towns. But when we went to to uh, Saskatoon first in 2023, the first time we went, and the first night we got there, first of all, I went into my hotel room and tried to shower and hit my head on the fucking (laughs) soap. (laughs) You know those soap dispensers that (laughs) stick out on the shower? Like, I just, like, stood up and, like, like, fuck, ow. We were doing this awful bar show for some, like, local comic. And then you kept looking at me the whole night, like, yo, are my pupils different sizes? Because you thought you had a concussion. (laughs) And you were, like, jewing out really hard in Saskatoon. Yeah, so the first night we had to do this... Child brutal show where we like got paid like a couple hundred bucks or something. Yeah, in like it wasn't even a bad bar. Like it was kind of a newer bar, like in a strip mall. But it was just a terrible show. Yeah, uh, the host was like he's literally like a seventeen year old yeah, kid yeah, yeah. <laughs> doing stand up comedy. Who and he's like not very no, good was, yet. No, and but he's really intense and he's just like I'm running this thing and it was just yeah. He basically it. all of uh, Saskatchewan comedy is run by an underage stand up comedian. <laughs> Pretty much, or a native. <laughs> yeah, but it's on. It's, you perform <laughs> underage white show. kid or a fucking forty-five-year-old native guy <laughs> yeah, who's like, I was on TV. Yeah, they good. both have to shoulder tap at the LC. But that was brutal. But then the the show that we actually, the Yuck Yuck show that we did, was pretty fun. It was in the basement of that hotel. Yeah, that was pretty sick. I mean, the hotel was terrible. We stayed in it, and it was like a homeless fucking shelter. Every hotel in Canada right now has been turned into either a homeless shelter, a native shelter, or an immigrant shelter. I mean, that's the same in New York. They're doing the same thing, right? A lot of those those immigrant shelters. It's Those immigrant shelters, by the way, and native shelters, they make them sound like it's this woke thing where they're like, we're helping, we're putting them, we're sheltering these people. But in reality, it's kind of like low-key, like they're in jail. Like it's kind of like a concentration camp. <laughs> One of our friends that uh, sadly passed away last year, RIP Liam Dugan, Dugan, can't even say, I don't even know his name. <laughs> Yo, one of my friends, whatever. Doug. No, um, Liam Dugan, and he uh, was a security guard. Yeah, and he was a security guard for those types of places for natives and stuff. Yeah, and he was like, "This is like a concentration camp because they go in first. They need to get an ID, so they make them like their own ID. Oh my god, for being in the camp. Yeah, and it has like a QR code on it. And the native one he was working at, they were bussing the natives out to go and be like go go do activities like yeah. play like go on roller coasters go break rocks <laughs> go, to the, go to the mine build fucking teepees build the railroad um yeah no no like to, they would take them yeah, out, yeah like, they go like go-karting they'd go bowling <laughs> these like and, and they would have they would get on the bus and they'd have to show their id and scan it and Jesus. not be hammered but most of them were just hit because it, for them, it's it's you know when you go in a hockey tournament or something when you're a kid and everybody's just like drunk and the like parents are drunk and the kids yeah. are drunk and the kids are smoking weed on the balconies. That's yeah. basically what those hotels turn into. For yeah, them. if they're native, like not if they're immigrants because they don't fucking drink usually or like smoke weed a lot. But fuck, it's just such a crazy thing that we have in this country where it's all, every building that can you know that's a hotel like these hotels just get turned into immigration places and they're okay with it because they get paid a shit ton yeah like the government's like we're gonna rent every room you have yeah for three years like oh yeah i'm gonna say no to that <laughs> yeah even at a discount it's like yeah we know that this place is like yeah out. like the hotels are making a killing off of uh from the government off of all of these fucking things it's yeah just totally it's fucked up 
It's Remember nuts. the one we went to in Regina where it was the Ukrainian refugee camp? And then we tried to go to oh the pool God. and there was just two guys with their shirts off. That was in Regina. Yeah, that was Regina. Also Saskatchewan. It was like a, the whole, whole whole hotel was filled with specifically Ukrainian immigrants. And they were the worst. Like they were just like, they were like bathing in the fucking yeah, pool. Yeah, and then they had photos of us in the fucking elevator. So it made it look like we were like easy oh, marks. Yeah. Like we're like an easy Yeah, because we were performing in the building. So it was like, yuck, yuck's performing this yeah, week. Yeah. And it's like Ben Bankus, <laughs> Armin or Bobby with our names, pictures. <laughs> like literally. Might as well just put their fucking <laughs> room, room number on. That's what I was going to say. Yeah, like just put my home address. That, remember when it, they didn't have, was it they didn't have heat or they didn't have no, you air couldn't, conditioning? No, you couldn't put, you couldn't turn your heat down. So you were just like oh, yeah. sweating in your room for like. And and then I went in yours, and I'm like, this is completely fine. What the <laughs> fuck is this? So I had to switch rooms and shit. Yeah. Yeah. That was that was good times, though. And I think There was that one. Remember that one crazy guy that followed us from Saskatoon to Regina? Oh, he was like a fan, right? He, he wasn't. Uh, was he a he fan? He wasn't a fan, but he, like, became a fan. He became a fan, but he was, like, the scariest kind of fan because he just literally was, like, a guy who flipped his oil rig in Fort McMack. And he was like, fuck it, I'm leaving my phone at home. I'm going on the road. And he just like... What do you mean he flipped his oil? So I remember talking to him. So this guy followed us like from Saskatoon to Regina. And I was like, so what's your life? And he's like, well, I work at Fort McMac. I flipped Fort the truck. Mac. Yeah. Oh, he flipped a truck. He flipped a truck and he had like a meltdown at work. <laughs> so then he went on like paid leave. And then he was like, well, fuck it, I'm just going to drive. So then he drove to like Saskatoon, watched our show, and was like, "Oh, they're going to Regina next. I guess I'll come." <laughs> and then just like the America Takeover tour starts May eighth in Boston. Everybody, here are the dates: May eighth, Boston, B Laugh Boston; May 9th, Detroit, Michigan, House of Comedy; May tenth, Red Bank, New Jersey, Vogel at Count Base Center of the Arts; May eleventh, Portland, Maine, Empire Comedy Club. May 12th, New York, New York, New York Comedy Club in the East Village. May 14th, Orlando, Florida, The Funny Bone. May 15th, Tampa, Florida at The Funny Bone. May 16th, Dania Beach, Florida at The Improv. May 19th, Syracuse, New York at The Funny Bone. May 20th, Philadelphia at Helium. May 12th, or sorry, May 20th, Philadelphia at Helium. May 21st, Buffalo, New York. And May 23rd, Albany, New York at the Funny Bones. So go get your tickets. Thank you guys for supporting me. We're going to have more U.S. dates on the books very soon for Middle America, the South, and the West Coast. Followed us. This is like literal serial it's not, killer. Yeah, it's like seven hour drive. Yeah, it's like stupid. insane. Oh, no, I was like, maybe it's like three and a half. I forget. But still, to not know somebody. And yeah. To, that's the groupies that we that's get. That's how good the show is, baby. Yeah. Gotta Rock get stars get like chicks. We get like dudes that just ruin their careers. <laughs> just like, because I'll follow them around. My girl's like, oh my God, girls want to fuck you after the show. And no. it's actually just some guy following me seven hours. Literally, later. yeah. Some dude that's like, In I a hate. fucking <laughs> pickup truck. Like, I got to see that again. I know, I know. <laughs> fucking ridiculous. <laughs> Literally the same jokes. It's like, <laughs> be cool if you're a woman, dude. Yeah, like, seriously. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> I mean, that's what it is. Like, a lot of my con con like fans, like 73 point something percent are men. Hell yeah. And then the other 27 or 20 whatever are, are women, and then there's 3% that are trans. 3% <laughs> undisclosed. <laughs> undisclosed. <laughs> yeah. No, we had a lot of fun on the last year's tour going from coast to coast. That was really cool. I want to get matching tattoos with Armin that say P2L. Well, yeah, because the tour was called Permission to Laugh. Permission to Laugh. And I made a website called Permission to Laugh.com. I think it's defunct now, but it used to just go to my website anyway. But so let's like, get a QR code to a website that doesn't exist. But we actually, <laughs> when, when I made that Permission to Laugh thing and the idea to do Permission to Laugh as the name of the tour, yeah, we the first one was actually that Toronto show. Yeah. The Toronto, so Toronto, my first ever show where I made the money like properly there was a lula lounge because bef when i i've been working for yuck yucks since 2019 and when i was opening or middling or hosting and then i finally was headlining with yucks but it's still like headlining with yucks 
you're making, you know, you, as because you, you're not bringing the audience. Yeah, Yuck you're Yucks just you're making a set raid. You're, you're not. Just a, it's just a, people yeah. are coming to watch comedy that night because there's a comedy club called exactly. Yuck Yucks, and people know what it is. And in Canada, it's like the biggest name in comedy, so people come and see it, right? Yeah. So you make, but the comics make like three, four hundred bucks, whatever a night, versus you know doing your own show, you make like thousands of dollars, right? So that was my first one was at Lula Lounge in Toronto, which mm. was a salsa lounge that I was worried they were going to cancel me before we even did Yeah, because they did drag. I remember your fans were upset because they some of them found out that they did drag shows there during the oh, week. Yeah. So he had some like crazed woman call and like leave a voicemail and send it to Ben being like, I hope you know what you're supporting by doing this. <laughs> it was just nuts. Yeah, some woman basically sent me a voice note on Instagram of her calling the venue, and the, like you can hear the venue person talking to yeah. you on the phone, and she's talking to her, and she's like, "I heard that you do drag brunches," and they're like, "Yes, we do. Would you like to make a reservation?" Kind of thing? <laughs> she's like, no, "Well, can I bring my kid?" And they're like, "Sure," and she's like, "He's she's only two. And they're like, yeah, it's fine, whatever. <laughs> and like, she's just like, that's disgusting, you pieces of shit. And like, fucking hangs up and like sends me this as if I, and then sends me this whole paragraph like, I'm so disappointed in you, Ben. Yeah. Like, you should be choosing a different venue. It's like, I, and I made a joke about it that night. It's like, this is the right wing version of cancel culture where they're canceling people they like because yeah. they're not doing what they want them to do. It's, yeah. At that point, I mean, that woman was obviously just a controlling, yeah. psychotic. A lot, of, like a lot of the anti-vax. Like I hate to say it, but like there are like a lot of anti-vax people who are just very controlling. How can you let your kid go to that pool when there was a tranny in it? It's like, well, because my kid's got to fucking swim. You know what I mean? Why don't you go find me a pool that a tranny hasn't been into? Not so easy, is it? Right? Um, so, <laughs> but yeah, so we did that show there at, at that place. And they ended up, so right after that show, yeah. it was sold out. It's like, it only fit 200. We had like 215 people. It was like yeah. standing room only. And after that show, they were like, can we do another show next week? And I'm like, no. Like, this yeah. took me a month. <laughs> it's like months. This took me like a month or two months to sell this place out. Like, I'm not, I can't do it next week. Yeah. But then in like a few months, I was like, hey, hit them up. You want to do it again? They're like, oh, sorry, we can't never work with you ever. Yeah, again. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, I forget why I was talking about that, though. Why did I bring it up? Uh, the tour. Just all the, all the shit. That's how the tour started, right? So we did it at Lula Lounge. Sold out 215 people. Um, and then the next one was we actually went on the real P2L tour, which was, where did we go first? Victoria. Victoria, then we went Vancouver. Vancouver. Surrey. Surrey. Kelowna. Kelowna. Calgary, Edmonton, Red Deer. Calgary, Redmond, uh, Redmonton. <laughs> Red Deer, Edmonton. And then Sa and then we took a break. We went back to Toronto. Then we oh, flew yeah. back out to Saskatoon, Regina, and then two weeks in Winnipeg. Two weeks in Winnipeg. What Which if were the worst oh, two God, weeks of our lives. That was a fucking nightmare, <laughs> we were too. Going schizophrenic by the end of it. So the so all of that was my tour. Like, I was making the proper money, except for the Winnipeg stuff. That yeah. was like a Yuck Yucks gig, so it was like 200 bucks a night. Yeah. And But it was two weeks that we had to stay there in this hotel where the comedy club was at the Fort Gary and the first night, the girl comes in, and she's like, oh, my God, this is amazing. You, you've sold the most tickets that oh, anybody's yeah. ever sold at this club. Yeah, she told you that you outsold Sean Majunder. Yeah, she's like, you sold more tickets than Sean Majunder. It was like fucking... He's on, like, fucking... CBC Indian. He used to, like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Omni-Pakistan. <laughs> 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 he used to dump slime on kids yeah. on Apo, like... Yo, don't talk shit about yeah, John I mean, That was, yo, <laughs> that was yo, pretty, actually, it was pretty sick. Oh. Yo, actually, yo, this guy. Yo, you, like, when we were kids in Canada, they have this thing called YTV, which yeah, is like youth TV. Basically, whatever. like, Nickelodeon shows yeah, and shit. Yeah, it's like SpongeBob and shit like that. But he, they they have, like, a part of it where they actually have actors doing... It's kind of like a podcast. Like, yeah. in between every show, they're like, that was sick, right, kids? Oh, like, that's why, that's why we're doing this now. Anyway, so I outsold that guy. Yeah, you outsold YTV. And she's telling me all this shit before the show and all this stuff, and then I do the show, and then after the show... I, I talk shit about it because, like, they were selling tickets for, like, $13. Or yeah. Like, so cheap. Like, $13 Canadian is, like, $7 American. Like, yeah. it's just nothing, right? And... So I'm like talking shit about the ticket prices. I'm talking shit about I'm like, oh, it's haunted, like <laughs> fucking whatever. 
And then after the show, or the next day, I get a call from the owner of Yuck Yucks being like, what happened last night? Oh, you that's not... Stunk up well, the- no, well, what happened was we were, like, finally kind of enjoying the hotel. Like, we went to the restaurant, and then we were like, let's go work out. Then we were swimming. Like, right. we're literally splashing around in the pool. Like You were in the hot tub. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we were both having fun. And Armin's not even a Yuck Yucks comic at this time. I'm yeah. just bringing him. I'm like, they were even being difficult about putting him on these Winnipeg shows. We're like, oh, I don't know if we can give him a room. He's going to have to sleep at the end of your bed. <laughs> and shit like that. And yeah, what did you say? You said I was a Persian cat just at yeah. the end of your bed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm like farting all night. Shit. Yeah, dude, I literally so heard gross. shit coming out of your ass. Oh, yeah, because it was like they had a washroom where there's no fan. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I'm just shitting. This guy's lying on a cot. His head's like at the edge. There's like it's a like, vent where you can yeah, like literally yeah, yeah. see my legs through the vent. <laughs> I was like fucking Shutter Island, And bro. I'm just shitting. It was so fucked. He could hear like my asshole, like, like going I like, heard. Yeah, yeah it just was bad. completely. Just it, was, it was so. It was like for two weeks. It was like, yo, do <laughs> it's like, do you want to do comedy or you want to listen to Ben Bank is no, taking eventually, shit? Then you get an Airbnb. <laughs> yeah, eventually something? I got an Airbnb. It was In, like some ghetto. Some, it was on Toronto Street. I was like, oh, that's Whoa, sick. Toronto and then Street. I got oh, there and it was Toronto like Street. straight up migrant housing. Oh my god, <laughs> it's so dark. Thanks for listening to the podcast, everybody. If you're enjoying the show, please support us on Patreon patreon.com slash Ben Bankus and you get a free bonus podcast every week if you're a subscriber and you just want to go check it out and see what Patreon's all about go to patreon.com slash Ben Bankus and you can listen to the first five minutes of every podcast that we do on there for free but yeah so yeah the one hotel that doesn't have immigrants so like you can't stay here <laughs> oh they're gonna think go we're one of those hotels hotel. <laughs> <laughs> so welcome to yuck yucks um, but yeah yeah at the time i wasn't even signed so i was just like he was so afraid when mark Breslin, like the owner of yucks called me and was just like what the hell happened last night like the owner yeah the owner was literally ready to cut the whole week, like uh, after the first show, was willing to be like, we're gonna just gonna fire, or maybe they were gonna have me only do one week. I forget yeah. what they're gonna do. They were gonna be like, just go home, don't no more shows. Even though I had sold all my fans, were like coming yeah. to like shows, and I had just bought a ticket for Cass to fucking get on a plane and fly. She yeah, was literally in the air yeah, as they called yeah. me. They're like, his fiance, yeah, was, the whole weekend's yeah. canceled. You got to go home. Yeah, I'm like, she's flying. on her way right now. Was even flying. Mark was like, uh oh, oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> he was like, oh fuck. And then he was like, yeah. okay, let me talk to her and shit. And then so then he's like, okay, just do the second night, no problems. No, don't talk shit about the venue, whatever. So we did the second yeah, he night. He basically broke every yucks rule. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so. We did the second night and we killed and it was fun. And yeah, it was fine. Yeah, and I remember being so because I, yeah, I wasn't even signed to Yuck Zone. I was like, oh, he's mad at me. I was like, oh no, Dougie, <laughs> <laughs> you ruined my life. <laughs> yeah, you thought like Mark was gonna be. Well, Mark was. He did say that you bombed. Like, yeah, he was like, like Armin stunk the place up, and Armin's like in the, he. It's like on speaker in a pool. <laughs> I know. Yeah. And he's across the pool in a hot tub with like a fat Russian guy, <laughs> just like a random fat Russian guy in a fucking hot tub with him, and he's just looking over at me like. What's going on? <laughs> Why is Mark mad? Why is he saying I'm bombing? Did I get fired? Oh, oh no, no. fuck! Yeah, I so know. Fucked. Yeah, yeah. But the and, and then we went home, <laughs> and that was <laughs> and then <laughs> after two weeks of yeah. just torture, <laughs> literally and hell. mental anguish. <laughs> it does. Oh it does God. make it like people are like, "Yo, how much do you love comedy?" It's like, bro, we go through the <laughs> worst experiences. Oh my God! Just for like twenty to forty minutes of fun. Those are stage. yeah. Those are just the experiences that are part of yeah. the actual fucking yeah. Comedy. The the part that yeah. I remember you told me that once when it's like when you're doing a weekend somewhere. It's like, bro, they're actually paying you to just be in the city. It's not about the time you do on stage. Like, <laughs> you're just being paid to be in Abbotsford for a night. <laughs> like you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> it's like well, you know? that's no. That's the thing about. Um, show business is that you're not paid for when you go on stage or when you're on when the camera's rolling you're paid for all the time that you're waiting around literally yeah for everything, the fucking, everything. when i did sidetrack side note but when i was young like 21 i did background acting yeah in degrassi and i did it in a like a movie called carrie and stuff like that <laughs> and it was insane dude like one night in on carrie it was such a long night. It was like a 17, 18 hour. Like, oh, like and you're just on set. Well, yeah, you're on set. And at one point, it's like, finally, we got the shot. And the guy's like, all right, we're wrapped. And everybody's like, woo! Like, there's like literally <laughs> hundreds of extras, right? Yeah. In this big scene where it's like a, they recreated a whole prom. And oh, everything. I know the movie, Carrie. Yeah. So we're all like, woo! 
yay, Let's we're say, done. You're in Carrie? We go out, yeah. That's we go sick. out, we get on the bus, like it's a school bus to take us back to like the area where with all our shit is. Yeah. And we're all in the bus, sitting on the bus, ready. We're like, fuck yeah. It's like th- four in the morning. Yeah. Like, we've been there since like 6 a.m. the day before. Like it was just some crazy amount of time. And uh, the guy comes on the bus and goes, you're going to hate me, but we got to go back and do it again. <laughs> and everybody's like, no, what the fuck? There's literally black kids there being like, fuck this shit. <laughs> like punching the seat in front of them in the school bus. Like, fuck. <laughs> and like, <laughs> like all the, like, us, like even, yeah, then like those same kids like five hours ago were like, yo, I'm going to be a movie star. Yeah, right? I know. <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, it's I so can't funny. handle this shit. That's so fucking so, funny. But yeah, that was the P2L tour. And then we went back to Toronto. Then we did more tour in Ontario, didn't we? Then we went to Kingston, Montreal. Uh, you didn't take me to Montreal. No. You took you took a I took you to Kingston. I took uh, your friend Robert. You took Robert who farts a lot and you got mad oh. at him for driving like a Jew in a Indian man's car, a white Toyota Corolla. Yeah, he has a white Toyota Corolla and just drives it like shit. Yeah. He's just like a twenty three year old like Jew from North York. <laughs> and he's got he's got like he's all he's got like old people spots all yeah, over his body. He's like, got like goiters and yeah, goiters. He's got and like fucking back knee and shit. <laughs> and he's like we shared a hotel, like me, him and fucking Boardman. Boardman. And just the, they had to sleep in a bed together, just two Jews. Oh, just recreating the Holocaust. And, <laughs> <laughs> just, oh you get in, it's cold. <laughs> Thanks for enjoying the podcast, everybody. If you want to go and watch one of my stand up comedy specials, they are both available for free on YouTube. They are called Please Wear a Mask and Gay Tatorship. Go check them out. <laughs> oh, God. It was so bad. But yeah, and every morning he'd just be up like with yeah. his shirt off. No, that was the best. What was fun about that for me was I would get calls from you and Robert both jewing out about each other. Like, hmm. like you would be like calling me like, what's wrong with him? He's 23. He's always tired. He wants to go. To the- <laughs> he doesn't know how to drive. Well, he can't drive. And then I would get a call from Robert being like, why is Bank is yelling at me all the time? <laughs> <laughs> just screaming at me what the fuck i didn't sign up for this and i'm like yeah welcome to my world <laughs> this guy was like you know he wants to be a comic he has no real other job prospects other than farming school yeah he went to he's farming like a guy school. from who grew up in a like a soviet looking yeah. like apartment yeah. block so in toronto could, yeah, and wants yeah, to go yeah. and be a farmer and fucking <laughs> yeah, yeah. he wants to see some grass for once in his life <laughs> this guy grew up without plans. So bad. And the whole time he's just complaining, right? So like we're, he's like, oh, bro, it's so far. I'm like, dude, it's Montreal. We're dude, going. It's, dude, it's three then Jews we're like, in one so, car. You know, we're like doing shows and shit. And like one night where I got a spot and he didn't get the spot. So he's like, I'm going to strip club. Oh, yeah, he's, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, that was another argument. <laughs> was you were like, what the fuck? You want to be a comic? Watch the fucking show. You want to be around <laughs> it. And then Robert was like, well, I get one minute to myself. I want to have an asshole in my face. <laughs> like you guys are Jesus both Christ. just fucked. You guys are both out of your mind. <laughs> yeah, oh my God. he wanted to go to the casino so bad, and then he spent <laughs> twenty dollars. <laughs> I know he's so in dude, like three hours. This guy calls me to be like, "Yo, bro, watch me play craps online," and he's making <laughs> twenty cent bets. <laughs> like, like shut the fuck up, bro. I don't want to watch. Like we're this. like looking for him at the casino, and he's just sat at a crap like a <laughs> like a like a computerized craps table, <laughs> and he's just. Like, fuck, bro, I just lost $5. I'm like, shut the fuck shut up. Shut the fuck up, dude. Let's leave. That's nothing. But then the last day, like, there was, like, comics in Montreal were like, yo, you're sick. Like, you know, there's other places you can do shows at. Yeah. And I'm like, let's stay for a little longer. He's like, bro, I got to get home to my girl. <laughs> <laughs> he's, like, <laughs> he's like, my girlfriend. I'm like, what's your girlfriend's deal? He's like, she's an Orthodox Jew. Oh, yeah, yeah. So and I'm <laughs> only allowed to see her on Sundays. That's what he was trying to tell me. He's like, I'm only allowed to see her on Sundays. So we have to go home so I can see her. And because then he's like, because she's going to Israel, bro. <laughs> I know, yeah. She had to go fucking start October 7th. <laughs> yeah, bro. She's going to a music festival. Right? <laughs> I know. This is the last time. I'm going to see her, fam. Yo, Armin's cousin's going to go crazy. <laughs> but, you know, no, it was like way before like October yeah, 7th. No, it, it was, was just like, bro, yeah. she's trying to go to Israel. Like, yeah. I'm not going to see her for a month. I'm like, who gives a shit? You're doing comedy. Yeah, you're he's in like, Montreal. He's like, bro, I got to go rub my back knee on her. I got to fucking... <laughs> And then, yeah, so then the last <laughs> night he's like, bro, we can't leave Montreal until I get my girl some bagels, bro. <laughs> I gotta get her bagels. <laughs> Why does he go to Montreal? So then we're the- driving. He's like, no, let's go to this spot. We, he's like, I know the spot to get bagels. 
we're trying to leave the city right after we get them, right? The hotel is done. Like, yeah. We have all the shit in the car. And we're fucking driving to the bagel place. The line is like five blocks long for the bagels. <laughs> and I'm like, bro, I'm not fucking waiting in this goddamn <laughs> line. Like, we can go to a fucking yeah. Loblaws and you can get some fucking bagels. <laughs> and you can fucking go, these are fucking Montreal bagels. You won't know the goddamn difference, right? <laughs> But uh, I mean, maybe she will. Cause no, because I know the specific, are yeah, legit. The, Obviously, the specific legit. ones. But yeah, that's not, bro. <laughs> yeah. Only five hours for Jesus fucking Christ. the most Jewish thing to wait in line for. Oh my God. Literally, so so he wants to go on a bread line. It's just too much. That was like the last P2L, I think. That was it. That <laughs> he was never end. laughed again. <laughs> <laughs> Permission denied. <laughs> 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 but I still think we should get the P2L, the matching right here. Yeah. Right on the back of the arm. Should we? Yeah, why not? If people ask you what it is, it'd be like, yo, it's the first comedy tour I went on. That's true, yeah. Like, yo, it's pretty big. There's a Jewish man with you the same like, tattoo. Oh, this, this is a Ben Bankus tour on my arm. Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm afraid I'm going to oh, get... Was it your tour? I'm well, not really, but... Yeah, well, I was on it. I made like 600 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> Got a tattoo. <laughs> No, I'm scared because I'm gonna get it, then you're just not gonna get one. No, we're like, gonna get it at the same time, not for like from gonna, the same person. You want to hold hands? Yeah. <laughs> hold sit hands there and be like, do it. You're gonna be like, oh, <laughs> 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 mm. just halfway through. You're it's like, just so. I just funny, want like, P and two. I don't want to know. <laughs> I don't want to. Laugh. I don't want the L. <laughs> Permission to lurk. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I want to know your fans' reactions, and they're like, "Oh, this guy's got a fucking tattoo with an arrow." I was gonna get a yuck yucks tattoo on my back, just to on your back. Yeah, I was gonna like, get a yuck yucks. How tattoo. big? I don't know, like your that. Whole, oh, I thought your whole back. It's just hard. It's hard to make it that small. Yeah, it's, yeah. Hire it's like an kind artist. of yeah. The one guy was like, "Oh, it's got to be pretty big." I was like, "Oh, yuck yuck." <laughs> this guy gets the whole sign on the back. The whole back. <laughs> <laughs> it would be pretty funny. Yeah, I know. It'd be so funny. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be fucking hilarious. I'd lose my shit. No, honestly, like every club in the U.S., like I, I'd be. I think it's cool that like that I sell out f- on my own would be cool to like get a t- like get an improv yeah hat. like the exact logo like the Yuck Yucks logo yeah, funny yeah, bone yeah. yeah that would be sick that'd be hard so I think we're gonna probably do that. But It'd be fucked know. up if you at the end of it it just all looks bad. <laughs> it's just a mismatched sleeve. Oh, coming to America, written <laughs> or <laughs> America Takeover. Yeah, America Takeover might be a tough one to write on my body. <laughs> <laughs> that's something that no, not for you. Maybe for me. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> if I write not if it's right here, I gotta wear a long sleeve. I'm gonna go through the border. Just get but thug yeah. life on your stomach. <laughs> Honestly, I do want a tattoo right here. <laughs> I really do. Another great way to support the show is by buying merch, folks. So you can go to benbankus.com, hit the merch button, and check out all of our awesome. Bank is show merch, some Teresa Tam merch in there. Uh, there's a bunch of funny stuff, so go get it now. What are you going to get? Just food? Sorry. <laughs> sorry. Sorry. That would actually be kind of cool. Kind of. Kind of gay. Yeah, what? Sorry for taking your shirt off? <laughs> yeah, that you have to look at me. <laughs> yeah, my bad. That's dude. actually pretty funny. That is pretty funny. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> for just look like shit. Get, how's my driving on your back? <laughs> Um, but this next tour is going to be amazing. American fans flowing in to the rescue. Um, they're going to carry me to the promised land. A lot of big things coming up. Rogan. I mean, it's not come. Uh, it's what I want to happen. It's going to happen. Got to get on Rogan. Got to get on. Uh, you know, Rogan's like the. He's the Johnny Carson of our time. Pretty much, yeah. As a comedian, right now, it's you don't want to be on Jimmy Kimmel. You don't want to be on. Um, I mean, Whoa. SNL is cool, obviously. Uh, if you know, well, I, like if Jimmy Kimmel approached me, he's like, "You can come." No, on. no, I'm just, it'd be funny if you were like, "Well, fuck Rogan, I want to do Trevor Noah." Yeah. <laughs> Yo, I'm trying to get on a Daily Show. Who's the host now? John Stewart again? John Stewart's redoing he's it. He's back. Oh my God, Jesus Christ! Guys. Oh, John Stewart, the guy that everyone it's like. I remember feel like, when he was funny twenty years ago. He's uh, back. Yeah, yeah, that's like yo, he your is mom. Still funny, obviously. Your mom thinks this guy's hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> 
It's not it's not a good way to get a, the young audience, but I think they've realized that the only people who are watching that are old anyway. Yeah, yeah. And they don't they're sick of Trevor. They, they don't know they don't know how to change the channel. They don't have dementia. We had South Africans at the show. Oh yeah, we did have South African gun smugglers come to Burlington <laughs> to watch you do comedy. They were like, "You're pretty funny there, he." Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, they didn't. They were more. They more had the British South African accent, which yeah, is like more Englishy, because the guy that I used to work with was more Afrikaans. More Afrikaans, yes. He talked like this Afrikaans. Hello, like Afri- it's it's honestly a hard. It's accent. a tough accent, bro. It's a, it's That's a like, tough one to impersonate. But I told you that story. But I don't know if I can tell it. But it's kind of funny. But yeah. When, yeah. Yeah. I don't want to tell it. But you can't tell that one, I guess. Yeah, but it is. That's funny. Patreon. 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 Dot com. Go to subscribe to. We do a bonus podcast every week. This might be one of the last couple podcasts where we're together, at least for the next two, three weeks, because I'm gonna be in the states, and uh, maybe we'll maybe you'll come down. We'll do another pod down there. But um, guys, thank you for listening. Support this show. Patreon.com slash Ben Bankus. Support me on Instagram, obviously Ben Bankus too. Support Armin R. Bobby on Instagram. Armin R. Bobs, A R M I N A R B O B Z, or Z if you are in the U.S. And um, yeah, man, keep getting tickets to the shows. Keep supporting me. You guys are my lifeblood. I thank you so much for everything. And I'm very humbled meeting you all after the shows. I love shaking all your hands. People come up to me after the shows and they go, I know it must be annoying. You know, everybody wanted a piece of you. It's like, dude, this is a part of the job. This is like shit I'm going to remember for my whole life. Like, I'm put my whole life savings, put all my money, put all my uh, passion into this career, and it's everything for me. And so I appreciate the fans. I always take the time to say what up to them and, and show my appreciation for them. So thank you, guys, and I hope you have a great week. Peace.